The other thing would be the alignment with emotion. It would be to experience all of your emotions deeply and to, to, try to learn to never act your emotions out onto somebody else. Because those are two very important different things. So the one is experience your emotions fully. If you need to cry, cry and let people see you cry. Have honest connection to your feelings. And the other one is to not be, become a victim of your emotions by throwing them at somebody else just because you feel a certain way. Welcome to Personal Development Mastery Podcast, where you will find both the inspiration to grow and the actions to implement towards your next level. I'm your host, Agi Keramidas, and I've been on a journey of personal development and self-mastery for six years now. And my mission is to inspire you to stand out and take action towards living your best life. In this podcast, I invite myself inside the minds of authors, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, spiritual teachers, people who will inspire you to improve your life and also provide you with actions you can take and implement. So on my ongoing journey of the podcast, on Thursday's episodes, I now focus on consolidation. Repetition is the mother of all learning, as they say. So instead of adding more knowledge, I revisit the previous episodes and consolidate the wisdom imparted by my guests. In the beginning of the episode, we listened to David Saville, who is a coach and a trainer, featured originally on episode 8, talking about alignment with emotion, allowing the, the flow of emotions or emotional maturity, as he called it. And this is the topic of today's consolidation episode, emotions, understanding them, evaluating them, mapping them, managing them, and also emotional intelligence and the two components to building it. My intention in these consolidation episodes is to distill the wisdom of my guests on this topic and share it with you in a way that you will find something that clicks, something that inspires you to take some action as a result. In today's episode, we will listen to three more of my previous guests talking about emotions, Chuck Hogan, Rich Waterman and Uzma Nakvi. And we will start with Chuck Hogan, who is a neurostrategist, a Tony Robbins senior trainer and crew facilitator for his events. We will listen to him describe a method that Tony Robbins teaches on how to self-evaluate an emotion or feeling in 60 seconds, and it's called the SEW method. Uh, and it's interesting, so I'm going to give all credit to Tony. Um, he shared this at an event, and, and I thought it was absolutely brilliant. In fact, I not only thought it was brilliant, I've adopted it in my life because it's helped me manage my state like that. So it's the acronym, the abbreviation, abbreviation for it is SEW, so, like if you were sewing with a needle and thread. Mm -hmm. And what Tony did is came up with a way of being able to self-evaluate an emotion or feeling within 60 seconds, at the most 90. But when you start getting really good at it, it'll be 10, 20 seconds. It's that quick. So, because like anything else, if we condition it, it becomes accepted within our body and in our environment, and it becomes a great strategy. And this has a lot of flexibility to it. So the S in, in SEW stands for sensation. And in this particular case, what we're feeling becomes really important. And where in our bodies is it located? Where? Because women have a tendency, they, go, they feel it in their gut. You know, they go, oh, I got that gut feeling, that sixth sense, that fem feminine intuition. For guys, it's like going, yeah, you know, I feel it in my heart. I got a heavy heart today. And we use this language. Sometimes that you'll feel it in your throat, like your neck, and you're like going, oh, I just can't get the words out. Boy, it's so frustrating. And in other times you go, oh, I know exactly where it's at. It's in this space between my ears. It's like living right here right now. And I, Ooh, man, my head feels heavy. I go, oh. So position matters. 
location matters. So where are we feeling the sensation? The E is the emotion. What is it? What is it that we're feeling? So we go, oh, I'm just so angry. I'm so, oh, I'm so frustrated. Oh, I go, oh, well, well, you used two terms. You said angry and frustrated. Which one is it? Well, I'm angry because I feel frustrated. Ah, so you're feeling frustration. That's the emotion. And it's resulting in anger. It's like, ooh, we can start to see this emotional mapping as well. So we know the sensations in our head, it's frustration, which is resulting in anger. Mm, why? Because when we do anything often enough, it becomes conditioned. And so we have an elicited response, and that anger is what becomes real. So the W, why am I feeling this way? Why? Because people go, oh, if you have a big enough why, though, Chuck, then you don't have to worry about anything else. I said, no, there's another why. Listening to this, I hope you can understand the importance of mapping our emotions and how to do it. And if you found this SEW method interesting, there is more. <laughs> you see, uh, Chuck Hogan is actually one of the 10 or so people that I've had on the podcast more than once. And because repetition is the mother of skill, when I spoke to him for the second time, I asked him again about the SEW method that can help us move through emotional states more quickly. And here's what he said. And the, uh, the abbreviation is called SO, S-E-W. The S stands for the sensation. Now, let me, I'm going to back up for just a moment. This is a way within 60 to 90 seconds that you can actually process in your own body. So within a minute to a minute and a half, when you get really good at it, you can do it in 20, 30 seconds. This is a way to not be, feel debilitated or triggered by something that's going on. Mm -hmm. So it could be a very powerful tool when we're feeling the onslaught of what I'll call negative input. So the first thing you're going to ask yourself is the sensation. What mm -hmm. am I feeling? And most notably, where is it in my body? Where am I having this reaction? Is it in my head? Is it in the space between my ears? Is it in my heart? My heart feels heavy. Is it in my gut? Hmm. Okay. The E stands for the emotion. What is this feeling? Because people will go, oh, I'm feeling frustrated. Okay, what does that really mean? So what's the emotion that you feel when you're experiencing frustration? And then I go, on, oh, um, I'm feeling judgmental. Like, you know, I'm so frustrated because I, I'm not getting it right. I, I, I keep doing the same thing over and over again. Oh, okay. So where are you feeling it? In your head. Oh, and what's the emotion again? Like judgmental. Been really hard on myself. When you when you recall this, you feel it between your ears, so that's the sensation, and then the emotion is this anger, and then the W is what and why? Why are you feeling this way, and what does it really mean? And like, well, this always happens, always, every time, absolutely. Well, often, has it ever not happened? Yes. Okay. So how would you like to feel instead of angry? You know, oh, free, light, you know, happy. Yeah, let's go for happy. I go, great. What has to happen in order for you to feel happy? They go, what? I was like, where focus goes, energy flows. You focus on being pissed. I said, your words, not mine. You focus on being frustrated. It's not working again. So how often have you exercised this? How often have you built that that muscle, I said, quite often. So we need to break the pattern. Mm -hmm. So how do you want to feel instead? So can help move you through this very quickly. And then we can start to anchor all the beautiful things that go along with those emotions and feelings that you want to feel most often. We will listen next to Rich Waterman, a coach and speaker, who at the time of our conversation was also one of Tony Robbins' senior trainers. Rich talked about the message that emotions give us and whether there is such a thing as negative emotions. 
let's listen to him speaking about understanding the the range or the spectrum of emotions we all have as human beings and also the reason behind them and what to do with them my belief is this as human beings we all have a range a spectrum of emotions from ones that we love like joy excitement love fulfillment mm. um gratitude all these mm. things that feel lovely right the reason they feel lovely is because it's our i believe it's my our body saying you're doing stuff that is really good for you personally and probably maybe for those around you as well mm-hmm. do more of that mm. do that's a really good thing to do you should do more of that so it's our body's way of telling us in different flavors do more of this it's a really smart thing to do we've got this other stuff um, that we have labelled negative emotions, um, disempowering emotions, all, all sorts of things like bad stuff. I shouldn't bad. I shouldn't feel that way. Um, and I definitely used to talk about it in those terms in the past. You'll be able to find videos of me talking about negative and positive and lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't label it that way anymore. And here's why: like as human beings, we are all capable of feeling the full spectrum of emotion. So we, we feel. We feel anger, we feel frustration, we feel loneliness, sadness, depression, whatever it may be. And we all feel joy, love, happiness, fulfillment. Done. The other emotions that we've nab- labelled as bad or negative, we all, we all, we, we've all got them. So my view is they would not have persisted unless they have a value. Now, I believe we were not meant to live in those emotions. We were not meant to immerse ourselves and get stuck in our emotions. And sometimes us making them wrong or us feeling we shouldn't be in this emotion means that we can look to explore it even more. Mm-hmm. We end up getting stuck in a stuck in a state of anger or stuck in a stuck in a state of frustration or um, loneliness or sadness or whatever, depression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The way I look at it, Aggie, is that it's like those emotions more are more of a little a little tap say you're not quite on track or there's something around you that is keeping you off track maybe there's someone around you or something around you that's keeping you off track yeah i think these emotions are little little taps that will nudge you uh, the voice there's a if you imagine that your head is a, a board of directors at a company meeting <laughs> and there are depression frustration and anger and all these other and they will have a seat at that table. <laughs> and occasionally they'll just put their hand up and go, Aggie or Rich, there's something not quite right here. Yeah. What you don't want to do is ignore them. Because mm. if you ignore them, you're pushing away the message. So they'll come back in another form or a different way or maybe stronger and louder. Equally, you don't want to put them in charge. You don't want them to be the CEO or MD. Mm-hmm because you're going to feel rubbish all the time and that's not going to be very good for you living the life that you want to live. So again, I think it's an acceptance of their role, um, talking to that role, talking to that emotion, understanding that emotion, not feeling that you need to move on immediately from it, but equally making sure you don't get stuck in it. Mm -hmm. And we will also listen to one more of my guests, Uzma Nakvi, who was featured in episode uh, 61. Uzma is a holistic transformational coach and one of the topics we discussed was emotional intelligence and the two components to building our emotional intelligence. So let's listen to Uzma. You're absolutely right that there is definitely a correlation between the two. So you're emotions are so much attached to how you put your feelings out and that is directly going to have an impact on what kind of behavior you have what kind of conversation you end up having Uh, for me I think there are two components to building emotional intelligence Uh, number one is the insight into your emotions so no emotion comes without a reason every emotion comes to you with a message and it's for us to stop and reflect and analyze what that emotional, what that emotion is there to give you? What insight is it giving you? Uh, whatever emotion it is, it's got something behind it that you really need to understand. That's the first thing. And uh, and with that, I would say also that 
if we try, the more we try to push down our emotions, the ones that we don't want to deal with because they're difficult, you don't know what to do with them. And so we end up just kind of ignoring them, pushing them to our side. But the more we do that, the more we realize that actually they're coming up even more because um, mm-hmm. they're so much more powerful when we try to ignore them. They're there all of the times. So the best thing is to just allow it and accept that right now I'm feeling anger. Right now I'm feeling sadness. Right now I'm feeling whatever feeling you're feeling at that time, let it come in and understand that it's come and then try to dissect why is it there? What is it trying to tell me? What does it want from me? What do I need to give it? What do I need to understand from it? And really kind of uh, get to know what, what it is. So that's the insight bit. And the second bit, which is a very important component to emotional intelligence is the control bit. Now, Having the control is the the ability to create the emotion that you want to create rather than just allowing ourselves to live by accident. So if we usually what happens is if we're not in touch with our, if we don't have the uh, emotional intelligence built within us, then as soon as we feel an emotion coming, we just run with it. Like as in, if it's anger, we we are very angry instantaneously. We don't allow ourselves the time to take a step back and really try to gather our thoughts and understand what the message is behind. And usually every emotion has several layers of messages behind it. So it's not even just one message. If we actually sat and did the homework, then we'd understand that there might be behind anger, there might be a boundary that's been crossed. There might be, uh, you know, other other issues that are built from sadness and some kind of an emotion that's been missing from what we all have emotional needs, right? If somebody has an emotional need that hasn't been fulfilled over a period of time, then it comes up as anger because anger is a very powerful emotion. I hope you found something valuable among these uh, parts of the conversations and also something actionable, something you can implement yourself. If you have enjoyed this episode, I certainly intend to do more of them, to condense the wisdom contained in these conversations and distill it into actionable items, steps that you can pick up and implement in order to grow and improve your life. And I would like your help. Tell me, what is your biggest challenge? What are you struggling with and would like to listen and learn more about? Go to personaldevelopmentmasterypodcast.com and send me a message. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in. Mm-hmm.